Every day, the average person in Britain flushes 60 litres of perfectly good drinking water straight down the toilet. As you can see, 60 litres is an awful lot of drinking water. Just try collecting that from the supermarket every day. Water creates carbon emissions because whilst we, uh, whilst all the water coming into the premises has to be treated to drinking water standard, only about 5% is drunk. And that's if your loo works. Mine has started to leak. And it seems it's not the only one. So I went into one cubicle and the water was absolutely gushing down, you know, as if it had been flushed, but it, it wasn't, it was just faulty. So then I thought, well, how many more are like this? And I went in, I went into five before I thought, I can't go into any more cubicles because people are watching. And actually three of them were just cascading water down through the pan, you know. I mean, lots of water a minute, not, you know, one litre a minute, probably three or four. I'm John Paul Flintoff. I'm not a plumber, I'm a journalist. When my own fancy loo started to leak, I set out to fix it, only to stumble on what looks like a terrible conspiracy against the Great British Loo and an environmental disaster in the making. In the course of my researches I've learned a great deal. That the flushing toilet was invented for Queen Elizabeth I, how to distinguish between the siphon, good, and the valve, bad, and I met an inventor who hopes to save the world. Now then, from 1863 onwards, this, the siphon, was well, the only thing allowed in a British system because it can never leak. Now the Americans never adopted the siphon. America, like the rest of the world, stuck with variants on the old piece of wood or flap of leather at the bottom of a cistern, only slightly improved to make them look a bit more modern. Uh, materials might have changed, the laws of physics haven't. If a siphon fails, you end up having to pump the lever to try and get it to flush, but what you won't do is end up with water being um, pouring down the, the back of your pan because the siphon's gone. That's what happens with a valve. In 1999, after nearly 150 years, the valve was quietly legalised again by a committee whose members included plastic manufacturers and the plumbing trade. This was presented as an environmentally sound solution because from now on you could have a dual flush. A short flush if that was all that was needed and a longer one when that was called for. It's a shame because people sort of say, oh, I bought a dual flush toilet, so six and three litres. Three litres, that's great, isn't it? You know, and yes, while they're working, there's, there's not a problem with valves. The only problem is that when they're faulty, they, you know, they leak. And I mean... It is estimated that 20% um, of all the toilets in the United States leak at all times. When they leak, you've got two choices. Either pay the bigger water bill, which the water companies love, or go out and buy a new valve at 40 quid a go, which the plastic manufacturers love. In fact, in a conversation I had with the chief executive of the largest valve manufacturer in the world, uh, I said, but don't these flushing valves leak? And she said, of course they leak. That's why we sell so many. And if you go in any bathroom or showroom now, all you'll see is push button toilets. Oh, hi, I wonder if you could help. I'm trying to get hold of a new toilet because um, my old one's started to leak and I want it to have a siphon. And uh, I know that there are very few of those around these days. I want, have you got many? Every toilet has a siphon. Uh, no, most of them have got valves now. Yeah, the push-button ones are all, are all given to leaking, and I want to have the old-fashioned siphon with a handle. So you've only got one, uh, one siphon flushing loo with a handle. Mm -hmm. And that's... No I suppose I've got no, no choice on the design then, have I? Not really, no. Can you tell me what it looks like? Is it possible to describe it? It's just a square white china system. So it's quite a simple design. It's not got scalloping or fancy sort of Edwardian style or... Right. So it's a straightforward square look. Mm -hmm. And have you got one in stock so I can come and see? Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so if I just pop in any time? No, 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 I haven't got one here. There we are, that's Plum Centre, one of the biggest suppliers. You don't have to be a conspiracy theorist to think that this is rather unfortunate. Nick Grant is an environmental consultant who confesses he was initially in favour of introducing the valve. What specifically has changed your mind? Um, just gradual evidence, some of it 
anecdotal, just you know, having bad experiences with things leaking and friends having toilets installed and them jamming and you know, seeing leaky toilets on my travels. So that's all anecdotal and doesn't really count as proper evidence, but that was sort of in the background. Um, but then, then slowly, the actual numbers have started to appear. The cisterns do not have a blanked off hole in the front, so if you later want to fit a siphon again, because it never leaks, you can't because there's no hole for the flush handle. Now it's not as though they couldn't do this because the toilets in America that are valves are operated with the handle on the front. It's quite a deliberate ploy and this is how they've managed to exterminate the siphon worldwide. It's gone in Australia that has horrendous water shortages. The valve's been made legal in 1999. One well, of the biggest piece of environmental treason against our water resources ever. Every social housing group throughout the land now, right now, are going around throwing perfectly leak free siphon toilets out and replacing them with valve toilets, 6.3 litre or 6.4 litre, dual flush under the, under the banner of water efficiency. And the poor old householder then, most of them in social housing, not on very high wages, they're left to pick up the tab on the leak for the leakage. Dave Wilkes is an inventor. He's come up with a device that sits on top of the siphon. It allows you to flush just as much as you need. A little bit, a little bit more, or even the whole system. Does the device that he's fitted in your loo actually work? Yes. What, can you tell me, were you ever sceptical? No, I actually, I wanted him to fit it when he first did it. And I, I, I said, you know, can we have one, can we fit it, can we see how it works? Because he had to convince me as well, as, as before he went out into the wide world. Okay, so I'm going to do a short flush now. And what's wonderful is it just, it does stop the second you let go. Right. Um, so you really know that it's, it's working. And I have to say, I owe you an apology for something else because for up till today, I've just not dared to try and install the interflush, which is so pathetic. But I've just done it and I'm really chuffed. Oh, right, you've got it on and working. Yeah, and it's, it's perfect. See, well, I hope so. It seems to be working very well at the moment. I'm really, really pleased. succeed, I am going to succeed, and you're going to fail, mate. Now one of the dragons wants to invest in his device, but Dave's turned him down because the man's asking for too big a stake. My mission is to save the site from the only flushing device that doesn't leave, because Britain's the last country to have the siphon. And why stop at Britain? Why not export the siphon around the world, take it to America, Take it to developing countries that are starting to fit more loos. Save them from water shortages too. You know, it's a very uphill battle. I mean, I, I've said to the Swedish rep from IFO, you know, they're a, they're a huge company in, in Europe. Um, and I've said to them, you, do you have this phenomenon with your valve of water trickling down the pan? Oh, yes, he said. The siphon is a far better technology. The toilet uses something like 35% um, of, accounts for 35% of all domestic water use and a much higher proportion in offices and theatres and motorway service stations. And if we are going to address the problem of water shortage, uh, which we, we need to, um, we might as well do it with the toilet.